All right, welcome back to Clash of Cultures. We continue our 2023 college football preview. Our next stop is going to be Ole Miss um, in Oxford, Mississippi. Uh, but before we get to the football, like always, we just appreciate the love and support. So if you're watching this video, please press the like and subscribe button. Uh, and again, the love that we've been getting, we truly appreciate it. Uh, so, so stay tuned. Um, comment in the comment section. Let us know what you like. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know what team you'd like us to break down. But with that being said, Stephen, what's your thoughts on Ole Miss? Uh, before we get into Ole Miss, um, just to kind of piggyback off of what you were just saying, um, right now we're sitting at or 492 subscribers. Uh, get us to 500 subscribers, y'all. We're going to keep going with these previews. Um, we have a lot of content coming for you guys. But um, just to kind of get into Ole Miss, um, I think Ole Miss is a tricky one. Um, I know I said that a few times, oh. um, but it's more so based off of what they lost and what they added, which we'll get into in a little bit. Um, but as you guys can see from the last year, I mean, they started off, what, 7-0? Um, they, I mean, they thought that they were, they had a good chance to go to the playoffs. Obviously they had a backload of schedule. Um, so, I mean, we see how that played out. I'm losing four the last five regular season games and ultimately losing to Texas tech in the Texas bowl. Um, but I think Ole Miss is a really good team. Um, I think they are, you know, they're solid. They're obviously they're ranked, they're ranked from ESPN, the FBI ranked 16 coming into the country or coming into the season. Um, excuse me. Um, and I think that's pretty fair uh, based off of what they brought back um, and stuff like that. Obviously, they come, they're coming off a four-game losing streak, um, but I mean, I think that's pretty fair. I think seven, seven and a half, or seven and four, seven and a half, four and a half is is pretty fair as well. They only have a half a percent chance to win the SEC. I mean, the SEC. We talked about the three kind of heavy hitters in the conference, but I wouldn't say Ole Miss it should have that low of a chance, um, just because I, I don't think Tennessee really had a big chance heading into this past season, and a lot of people had them winning it until obviously they lost to um, to Georgia by the two touchdown score. Um, so I think I think Ole Miss is going to be a good team to watch this year. Um, they have they have a really fun running back in Quinchon Judkins, who I think he's my he's my pick to win the Doak Walker this year. Um, so I, I think he has an opportunity to win that. Um, they have a lot of good good pieces on offense. Like I said, we'll get into. It. I don't want to speak too much on it, but um, what do you think about their last season, Dad? Uh, the 2022, how it ended and how it's rolling into 2023. Yeah, I, I think it's exactly uh, as you said. It kind of imploded late there. Um, you mentioned uh, lost the last four in a row. Uh, but really five of the last six after, after starting seven and zero. Um, and, and I mean, we'll start, we'll talk about their roster here shortly, uh, but it's really is, can they improve upon uh, really the beginning of the season? Now you mentioned Jenkins, uh, probably the best running back in the SEC, uh, probably in the conversation for best running back in college football with Blake Quorum and some other names. Um, a guy who returning 1500 yards plus 16 touchdowns. Uh, we know Jackson Dart uh, from USC, the transfer from USC, not last year, but the year before, um, had a pretty good year last year, uh, over two, almost 3,000 yards passing, 20 touchdowns, um, and he has a little bit uh, of ability to, to move around the pocket a little bit. Uh, he went for 600 yards rushing as well, uh, but uh, they've lost some players, um, and really when I say they lost some players, as you look at this list, uh, they lost some receivers. Uh, so the question is uh, what they're bringing back in receiver. They're really bringing back like their third and fourth receiver. Um, so the question is, uh, can they get that uh, production out of that receiving core? They did bring in Trey Harris. Uh, Trey Harris transferred over from um, Louisiana Tech, but that's not the SEC. Um, so let's see what that receiving core uh, is, because you know what you're going to get out of the backfield. Can you uh, put enough pressure on the defense uh, to pull some people uh, out of the box so Judkins isn't running against eight and nine man boxes? And that to me is going to be the symbol of how this season goes. And so, again, just to kind of piggyback off what you said, I know you said uh, they brought in Trey Harris from La Tech, but yeah. I mean, he, I don't think he's a slouch. I, obviously, he didn't play in the SEC, but he had 900 yards, 10 touchdowns last year. Zachary Franklin, um, 1,100 yards, 15 touchdowns last year from UTSA. So he's gonna be he's gonna be a decent guy uh, for them. You bring in Caden Price scoring. He's a tight end from Memphis. He had 600 yards, seven touchdowns. So you're bringing in 30 touchdowns um, as receivers. Um, now again, it's not the SEC, which I yeah. get, but I mean, I think when you look at Malik Heath and Jonathan Mingo, they they both had about 900 yards and five touchdowns. I don't think it's it's not like irreplaceable guys. I don't I don't think it's like neither of those guys are you know, Devontae Smith and, you know, yeah. some, something like that. So I I'm think just saying it's a question. Yeah, it's definitely a question, but I, I think it could be plug and play in this scenario. Um, But I think the biggest 
the biggest storyline for Ole Miss this year is the quarterback room. Um, you brought you yes. have Jackson's dart. You bring in Spencer Sanders and Walker Howard. You have three starting caliber quarterbacks. Spencer Sanders led an Oklahoma State team to that. I believe they were undefeated at one point, like six or seven and zero or something like that. Um, we haven't really got to them yet in their preview from last year, but he was a he was in he wasn't in Heisman conversation. But I know if you guys have followed the channel for a while, he was in our Heisman predictions after like four or five weeks because how good Oklahoma State was doing. So you you add in Walker Howard and Spencer Sanders. I would expect. Go ahead. Yeah, just think I think something's going on with Spencer Sanders. And I don't know if it's an injury. I, I just I, I think there's we are going to find out some things about Spencer Sanders. Um yeah, I, I, I think there must be something going on because uh, if you look and, and and we can kind of talk about it, it looks like Ole Miss is still trying to bring in quarterbacks. And I've kind of been wondering why. Uh if you've seen recently in recent news, uh the the the, the five star quarterback that just reclassified up two years. Um, yeah, there's something going on with their quarterback room. It's very strange. Yeah, and like so, I mean, like I said, I think this is going to give them the opportunity to to kind of have a lot of competition in there. I, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if any three of these guys are, are starting at some point during, these, during the year. I kind of compare it to a little bit to what the Texas A&M uh, situation was. Now, obviously, these quarterbacks are a little bit better than what they had yeah. um, at the collegiate level. But what I just mean as far as who's going to be the guy? I mean, I think that's the biggest concern for Ole Miss this year. Uh, the recruiting class um, was a decent recruiting class. You had, you know, 30th overall. You're 11 of 14 in the SEC. We already talked about how loaded the recruiting is in the SEC. So 30th in the grand scheme of things isn't terrible. But when you're 11th in your conference, that doesn't look good. Um, they had the number three linebacker in the country. I um, in Sunsurin Perkins. He's a number 18 player overall. Um, but just to kind of give a hot take here before we move on to the next screen. I think Ole Miss has a serious chance to win the SEC West, and I will I will give you my explanation for that um, as we get into their schedule. But I think the reason being they did lose a lot. They lost their best offensive lineman in Nick Brocker or Broker. They lost Tavius, Tavius Robinson, both the receivers. But I think, like I kind of alluded to earlier, it's going to come down to who they have as the, the guy throwing the football in Dart, Sanders, or Howard. I think yeah. Price Gorn, Harrison Franklin – the three of them can can replicate what Heath and Mingo did last year. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Judkins is still going to be that guy in the backfield. They bring back both of their two best offensive linemen in Caleb Warren and Jeremy James. They still bring back Kari Coleman on the, on the defensive end. And then you bring in a few other defensive pieces. Monty Montgomery, I want to say he was – I don't think he was second team all ACC, but he had six sacks, four forced fumbles, and two picks at Louisville. So he's going to be a starting caliber middle linebacker for them or outside linebacker wherever they want to place him. So he's going to be a solid addition. He can kind of pick up where Tavius Robinson fell off or left off. And again, I think heading into kind of future years, they're going to be a lot better. I also think another storyline is, is going to be they brought over the D.C. from Alabama. Yes. So that's that's going to be a big key for them. I mean, they gave up, I, I believe they gave up like 25 points per game. If you get that down to 19 or 20, I mean, that's a big jump. But I mean, when you, he was just with Nick Saban for the last three to four years. He could bring a lot of those habits over to Ole Miss and make them a lot better defensive team. They're already going to have the talent offensively with Judkins and whoever they have at quarterback and all this stuff. But I think defensively, if they're able to, to make that next step, they have a chance to, to kind of compete for the SEC West um, to, and to roll into that. So as oh. I made, as I made oh, this, shoot. as I made this, we have the same exact ceiling, floor, and prediction. We pick different losses, though. Yes. So my hot take is I think Ole Miss is going to beat LSU this year. And LSU fans in the video that we made a, a week or two back, a lot of them are coming at me because I said I didn't think they're going to be that good or that I didn't see the expectations that everybody else sees. Let me rephrase that. I think with it being a home game, I think that's going to really help um, Ole Miss. I mean, I do have them winning a very close game against um, LSU, but I think they lose to AM and and Georgia. But I still think 9-3 and three could get you into the SEC West Championship with how, how loaded the division is. I mean, you can have Alabama and LSU beat up on each other. I want to say – LSU or Alabama play Tennessee. I forget who which one of them, but they could lose that game. Yeah, I don't know. So. so, I mean, I think it just comes down to if if Ole Miss can can really go nine and three, whether you lose to LSU or a and I think if they go nine and three, they have a realistic chance to get into the SEC title game. And I'm going to be going to one up that. My prediction is nine and three, but if they somehow go ten and two, they're going to be in the exact same position that they were that LSU was in last year. Yeah. So where you could win the SEC and then somehow get in. Now I don't think it's going to happen, obviously, because that wasn't my final prediction. But my hot take is Ole Miss is going to beat LSU this year. 
And those o Ole Miss fans, if you're in here, let me know in the comment section if you believe that or if there's somebody something that you disagree with. But, Dad, go ahead. Uh, I know we had the same exact uh, kind of predictions, but you have a different loss, so kind of explain yeah, that. No, no, no. And uh, so I, I have Ole Miss coming in third in the West. Uh, I do have them in the hunt. I do think uh, all three games that I have them losing – are they're they're going to be good games? Uh, I have probably off the top, and we'll talk predictions um, for each conference. Uh, but I think I think LSU and Alabama are a little bit ahead of them in the SEC West, and obviously Georgia just. Uh, and I'm I again I think I'm giving Georgia a lot of credit uh, just for the back to back national championships, not necessarily uh, the talent they're bringing back. As I told you, uh, as we previewed them, I'm a little down on Texas A&M although I think they have a better defense than maybe I gave them credit for in the Texas A&M video. Uh, but I think, I think Ole Miss finds a way to beat them. I just, I think LSU uh, just has too much talent for them. Um, I think they're bringing too much back. I have, and again, I know we kind of compared the numbers, uh, but, but I have some concerns, like I said, about this wide receiver room. Yes. Players were able to play about the same uh, elsewhere, uh, but let's see what they do in the SEC. Now, obviously, somebody's going to catch the ball. Somebody's going to uh, put up some form of yards, right? I still expect uh, that they're going to be about the same in terms of throwing the ball in yards. Uh, but is the productivity the same? Um, and like I said, can you take pressure off of that running game uh, that, to give Judkins a little bit more space, um, you know, with, with, with players having to uh, defend the secondary? If they can do that, like I said, I think nine and three is a a, a, a good year for Ole Miss, uh, but I, I still just have them just a notch below the elite teams in the SEC. Yeah, so I mean, I think nine and three is a really good year for for Ole Miss, and I agree. I do think they are a notch below Alabama, LSU, and Georgia. I don't know. I just think that they could still pull a game off, though. I mean, at the end of the day, you got to line up and play, and that's the only reason why I predict them to to win that game. Um, but. Um, with all that being said, I think that Ole Miss was one of the more fun ones to kind of preview. The reason being yes. um, they have a lot of talent coming back and um, bringing in a lot of unknown talent from smaller smaller teams. So they're going to be a really fun team to watch. Um, but as always, guys, if you guys stuck with us through the whole video, uh, please hit the like, comment down below what you guys think about our takes, what teams you guys want to see. Um, but most of all, subscribe for us. We're almost at 500 subscribers. We're going to keep it rolling. Uh, the next goal is 1,000. If you guys want to get one of these signed jerseys right here, uh, just make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, join the community. Um, and continue to tap in with us on these videos. But we'll see you guys next time. Uh, peace out.